I've got a wolf. I've got a black wolf. Wow. Holy cow. Wow. Hello folks. So I've been asked several times by a lot of people, uh, why is it I'm so obsessed with these wolves and trying to catch them? Uh, it's a long story that dates back a lot of years, but one of the biggest reasons is this book right here. Uh, back in 1982, uh, my Uncle Fred, and Aunt Rita, Cousin Greg, and Cousin Kim gave me this book on trapping. It's, uh, let's see, where's the page? Trapping and Tracking. Okay. Trapping and Tracking by George B. Clausen. Uh, this one sentence here on the wolves is really kind of the reason I've had a lifelong obsession about this. There's one sentence right here. Most trappers in the United States were born much too late to ever get a chance to match wits with the timber wolf. And that always saddened me. I, by the time I got this book, I'd been trapping for four or five years, mainly muskrats and I caught a raccoon. And uh, I decided I wanted to be a trapper and by golly, I'd never be a real trapper without having a chance at a wolf. And that always saddened me and I wished at the time that we'd lived in Alaska or I'd been born earlier and had a chance to hunt and trap for these guys and I didn't think it would ever happen. Well back in 1995 the government decided to turn wolves loose in Idaho, Montana and Wyoming and they did it just down the road here about 60 miles from us which sounds like a lot of long ways away but in the western states 60 miles isn't very far at all um, within two or three weeks one of the wolves there uh, had traveled about 90 miles down to Iron Creek and killed one of Gene Hussey's calves uh, Gene has since died and he was a good friend of mine he never would admit that he had shot the wolf it had the wolf was found over the calf it was eating and both of them were dead. The wolf was autopsied and there were cattle parts in its stomach so there was plenty of proof to show that it had been eating the calf. Uh, it was a mess. Gene was quite a character and uh, when the feds came the, the wolf had a radio tracking collar on it and when the feds came to see what had happened he threw rocks at the federal agents and <laughs> almost got himself shot and uh, he ended up going clear back to Washington DC over all this and talking to him there and fighting for it and, and that was the beginning of the problems that we had here for the ranchers since then a lot of the area ranchers had lost a lot of calves and several cows uh, and, uh, but more than that the the deer and elk, and especially the moose, have been severely affected. The, the elk herds we used to have numbered three, four hundred heads strong. Now a big, a big herd is 50 to 100. Until the last few years, there were very few calves with them and very few deer fawns. The moose have been even hit harder since they're more of a solitary animal you get one cow moose and one calf and four or five wolves there is just no way that that moose is not going to lose her calf they surround it and tire her out until she can't defend it any longer and uh, the two of the outfitters that I've worked for I guide hunters in the fall two of them now have gone out of business because of the wolves there's really nothing left here in Idaho and it's sad it really is and because of all this there is a group 
in northern Idaho called the Foundation for Wildlife Management and they are promoting going out and hunting and trapping for the wolves. The, uh, the deer and the elk herds and the moose especially, like I said, have been hit hard and these folks are trying to make a difference. They're working alongside Fish and Game and uh, I'm not going to really get into a whole lot of this right now because uh, the head fella, Justin, is supposed to be sending me some updated brochures and I'll talk about this a little bit more when that time comes. But basically what they're doing is wolf hunting and wolf trapping is extremely expensive. You can spend a lot of money in both time and gas and equipment and everything else that goes along with getting out there and chasing these things. And that has caused a lot of people to not go out and try to manage them. It's just too expensive to do. And these people will help with the expenses. If you get a wolf, they will send you a check for some of the expenses. In my area here, it's up to $500. And in northern Idaho, where they're having much more trouble, it's $1,000, up to $1,000. And uh, without them, it would be a disaster right now. The, a lot of people that I knew that hunted and trapped for them had pretty well quit because it was just too tough. He couldn't do it. It was too expensive. And that's a shame. It needs to happen. We need management of it. When they when they turned them loose here, we were only supposed to have so many breeding pairs and so many wolves total for Idaho, uh, Montana, and Wyoming. And once those goals were met, uh, they were supposed to be taken off the endangered list and management could start on them. And it, the wolves did much better than anybody ever expected them to do. There was, they, they took them here from I, or Alaska and Canada and dumped them pretty much in paradise. It was untouched. I mean, there was lots of game here. And the weather is nicer. The, the winters are not as severe. And they did really well. And they overpopulated. And it, they did it quicker than people thought they would. And... Uh, when it come time to delist them and, and begin management of them, the antis didn't believe the numbers and they blocked all management. They filed lawsuits and everything else and the, they were trying to protect the wolves. They were well-meaning, but they did more harm to those wolves than hunters and trappers could have ever done. And what they did is they turned public opinion against the wolves even more so by not being able to do anything about it and watching our elk herds and moose, deer, all but dwindle. And because of that, uh, a lot of the people turned vigilante and they started trying to shoot them and trap them on their own year round and you know, all the numbers were messed up because Fish and Game didn't know about what was happening and they couldn't prove it, you know, and the uh, there was one guy here, he's a local fella, he went to prison because he was poisoning wolves, which is something that I am absolutely, totally against. I don't even like decon for mice, it's just a terrible thing to do to an animal. But, uh, the antis, we had a season in uh, 2009, the first hunting season, and uh, they, don't, they didn't even run the whole length of the season. They blocked the management, they filed a lawsuit, got the hunt stopped at about halfway through the season, and not that many wolves were taken. It's just too hard to find them and too hard to get, get them. And uh, because of that, that really pissed people off, and they decided, okay, if we're not going to be able to do this legally, we'll do it illegally. And that, it was a disaster. Well. That went on for roughly 15 years. I don't call the, an exact number of the years, but a long time. And now uh, we've been able to hunt and trap for them again, and things are starting to turn around. The last couple of years I've seen way more elk calves than I used to, and way more deer fawns. Um, where the, when the wolves move in, they are top dog. They have no natural predators at all. And, nothing 
nothing bothers them. And they have been known to dig black bears out of their dens in the fall, in the winter, and kill them and eat them. They have killed grizzly bear ca uh, cubs, and I mean, they're an amazing animal. I've got nothing against the wolves. I like them a lot, and the, I have great respect for them because they are such good hunters. But that's the problem. They're they're too good at what they do. But this is mine. Let me move this here. This is the wolf from the video. I got him back from the cannery here not too long ago, and he is a beautiful thing. Actually, it was a female, but she was a beautiful thing. And, I mean, it is such a thrill to finally been able to catch one of these and uh, have it. Uh, I could have sold this and got a pretty fair amount of money, but thanks to that foundation, they sent me a check for $500. I was able to keep my wolf, my very first wolf, the, the one I'd hoped for my entire life. I was able to keep this wolf, and I was also able to have a bobcat tan. Beautiful bobcat, and first one of these I'd ever caught. And uh, I was able to have it tan. I was able to have this black bear tan which is much smaller than the wolf is, actually. And I was able to buy six more wolf traps. And those traps are $35 a piece. And once you rig them up with the, the chain and the swivels, they're close to $50 a piece. Uh, I didn't count that in the price, but that it's a great deal. It really is. And Without them, it would be much harder to, to manage these wolves. So, anyway, that's kind of it in a nutshell. When Justin sends me more updated flyers, I'll go over that a little bit more. But uh, it costs $35 a year, calendar year, to join them from January to the end of December, you know, the, the whole entire year, $35. Uh, if you hunt or trap for wolves in Idaho, I would strongly recommend you join this group because they are the real deal. I was a little bit afraid of them at first, thinking they were an anti-wolf extremist hate group, but they're not. They, they don't want the wolves wiped out either. All they want is to manage them to the numbers they should be so we can hunt other things as well and have we can have it all if we do it right. And like I said, the antis, they didn't allow that and really messed things up badly. But it's starting to come back. It's starting to turn around, and I'm hopeful that it will someday. So anyway, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing my one and only wolf. I had hoped to have two of them to show you, one from this year and as well as last March. But it didn't happen. <laughs> Maybe this fall I'll get one. Thanks for watching, and please think about subscribing, and have a great day.